Hello everyone and welcome to part 2 of the Metallica backtracking episode and we'll just carry on where we left off as we talk about the band's 6th album, Load. Released in 1996, it would be released by the same label and produced by the same people. So yeah, there was a massive 5 year gap between albums as the band was damn busy touring their self-titled, even headlining Woodstock 94, but with that said, let's just get onto the album itself. It starts with the song Ate My Bitch, and it's a very odd way to start things. Load, gross name and gross cover, is mostly a rock album by them, and it would also be their first where James Hetfield started singing Yeah Yeah! more. It would also be where the band started to fall into some really weird habits. For example, the instrumental work, it picks a good riff on a song and sort of carries it strongly, but it's always brought back around in really weird ways. The lyrics are a bit darker themselves, talking about depression and death in a drudging, suitably murky way. The band do perform well and James can sing a good rock octave, even if him ending most words with a punctuating AH does start to great. The production is also quite dense, bouncing so oddly between the songs, providing a weirdly watery mood. Its structure is a thing, making this album way too damn long, which is the first of, like, all these five, and the pacing is a bit of a slog at times. My favourite song goes to King Nothing. Load is a strange beast, but it's got more going for it than you would think. Next is the band's seventh album, Reload, released in 1997, it would come out through the same label and be produced by the same people, again. I do not have a lot to say for this, as the band recorded so much for Low that it sort of became a double album, with Reload just being the other half of that. It's also the band's last with Jason Newstead, so I'll just move on. It starts with the song Fuel, and much like how Load was more of a rock album, so is Reload. It actually feels like more of a rock album, there's more rock-leaning rhythms in its riffs, which is quite clear to tell from the guitar work alone. The lyrics sort of carry the same theme that Load had as well, with songs about pain, celebrity, lifestyle and addiction, which does work well for the theme of the album. The band do have a better sense of direction as well, and I don't often do this for backtracking, but Kirk Hammett honestly rips this one up, he just sounds great all over this album. It's also got better production that adds to the album, making the band sound a bit more modernised and adding a lot to the style and sound. The structuring is a little bit better, it's still a long-ass album, but it sticks to a better pacing and does a better job with the steps that it takes. My favourite song goes to Prince Charming. Reload is a good sequel and shows the band taking on something different with a much better direction this time around. Next is the band's 8th album, Saint Anchor, released in 2003, same label, same producers, yada yada yada. Alright, so the band were uber popular by this point, putting out a documentary and a live album. James Hetfield was also in rehab for his alcoholism, so that adds to why this album was delayed so much. Jason Eustace's departure also did not help and producer Bob Rock played bass on the album. Speaking of, well, we do have to talk about this one, don't we? Saint Anger starts with the song Frantic, and it's a more stripped back new metal style, which straight up just does not fucking work for Metallica. Hearing them do a really bad system of a down impression for an hour and a quarter is not my idea of good metal, sir. First of all, God, the instrumental work has nothing, just feeling barely there and trying to be heavy and fast with none of the finesse that their previous albums had. Lyrically, it focuses on the addiction that James went through and the theme of anger, but it's about as deep as a 300ml Pyrex jug. The performances are okay, with the band still showing good timing and playing as fast as you like. Production is... Just a fucking messy cacophony of sounds so haphazardly mashed together, and let's not even bring up the snare work, no. The structuring is really weird too, changing pace with a little build between it, it's such a whiplash from a tonal standpoint. My favourite song goes to some kind of monster. Yeah, Saint Anger isn't good, but the band still sound fine, I just wish they tried sounding more like, you know, themselves. Next is the band's ninth album, Death Magnetic. Released in 2008, it would be their only release through Warner Brothers Records and it was produced by Rick Rubin. So the band would again be busy in the years between putting out a DVD, doing more touring and bringing a new member and current bassist Robert Trujillo. So onto the album which starts with the song That Was Just Your Life and thank goodness the band sound like Metallica again. We can celebrate! The instrumental work is very reminiscent of the first five albums, playing a faster thrash metal sound with faster riffs and good timed beats. The lyrics cover things like religion, forgiveness and nightmares and it's pretty vague but it's a lot of fun to explore. The band sound like they give a damn, as they often do, but they put the work in as you would expect. The production actually got some criticism from professionals who know what they're doing for being a bit too compressed, but I thought it sounded okay. It's maybe a bit too clean in some areas, but I don't mind it. It's also structured well, there's more super long songs, even a 10 minute instrumental track for no reason, which is also the longest song on the album, and I kind of love it. My favourite song goes to All Nightmare Long. Death Magnetic has a good return to form, adding a good modern take on the band's thrash metal sound. And at long last, we reached the band's 10th album, Hardwired to Self Destruct. Released in 2016, it would come out through Metallica's label of Black and recordings, and it was produced by Lars and James with Greg Fiddleman helping too. Again, the band were busy with a damn lot, like starting their own label, touring a lot, a concert film, putting out Lulu, and other important things like putting out Lulu. That does explain the 8 year time gap, I think. Anyway, this album starts with the sort of title track in Hardwired, and it already feels like Metallica, but kind of with a twist? The instrumental work is telling of this, nice and beefed up in a lot of places with a really, really good blend of riffs. The lyrical work is pretty good too, talking about abuse of religious power, drug addiction, and more stuff about Cthulhu. Yep. The performances are again solid, with everyone going in and just sounding like they're having a lot of fun and putting the work in. The production is pretty nice, with everything sounding clean, and it's easier to distinguish things as well. And the structure is well mixed up too, having a good flow with how the song's going, there's even little nuts to roll the work at some points. My favourite song goes to Halo on Fire. Hardware it is, fittingly, an explosive, hard-hitting album, and I would place it among the band's best work, at least with 
the modern times. So, whew, that's it. All 10 albums of Metallica done and dusted. I want to thank my good buddy Steve for the quite Herculean task, but it was fun and I liked it more than I thought I would. I actually used to bulk at this band a lot, but this was a lot of fun to sit through and uh, yeah, I think I learned something new about my feelings towards Metallica. Anyway, um, let's see, plans for the future. Music of the week at some point in the next few days. I'm not going to do it tomorrow because for one thing, I haven't got the albums graded yet. And for another thing, um, this is my third video in three days, so I'm not doing another one tomorrow. You know, I need a break sometimes. Uh, I will be putting up my PBW vs. AVW episodes though, so uh, look out for those. And the next episode of Backtracking will be a rapper named Dizzy Ride as requested by my good friend, Selk. And as always, thank you for watching, you're awesome. Bye-bye.